Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. And today we're reacting to a video that I have no idea what it is because you brought it up. I did is some there deep any, in any specific ver uh, reason why you recommended this video and told me not to watch oh, it? Oh, absolutely. I thought about it for at least one half of one second. It had the word death in the title. That's fair it. enough. That's okay, let's check it out. They hang, suspended in the thickness of the water, like skydivers in freefall. Their almost identical underwater gear makes them look like a SWAT team. They never let themselves forget that water is a hostile environment, not suitable for human life. These guys look legit. All of this to be able to enjoy. I like the way they're the looking at each other and, and to minimize the risk of not being able to make it back to the surface. Mimicking. They're on trim. They look like GUE style. Russian divers style. have often turned a blind eye to such strict rules. Their recklessness and thrill-seeking behavior have become legendary in the popular diving resorts of Egypt. Oh, so they're saying like, unlike these guys, the Russian divers are not like. Okay. Oh, okay. never mind idiosyncrasies of Russian diving. For many Russian tourists, Egypt is where their first love for diving is born. Many, while on vacation, and often out of mere this boredom, go for an introductory dive, then weeks or months later, return to complete the first phase of the diving course. Nice. And here, the luck factor comes into play. A good instructor will help you develop a lifelong love of the sea. A bad one, in best case scenario, will change your mind about taking up diving. In worst case scenario, will let you develop a hobby that will turn into a dangerous pastime, often with tragic consequences. The beginning of 2007 proved fatal to Russian divers. Several deaths in a row occurred during the weeks of Russian Christmas holidays in different parts of Egypt. Immediately, everyone began to wonder if these deaths were a result of a fatal convergence of circumstances, a misalignment of the stars, or a result of the mysterious nature of the ever-impulsive Russian soul. None of the what? incidents that took place in the early months of 2007 could name the exact cause Russians. of the divers' deaths. Official reports mentioned dire weather conditions or unfortunate circumstances. Members of the diving community mostly spoke about going over the allowed risk limit and the poor quality of training received by the deceased in relation to the complexity of the dive sites they were diving. On January 6, 2007, a group of five divers, including three Russians, a Dutch, and an Egyptian dive guide, rented a motorboat and headed out to dive Elphinstone Reef. The dive did not go well from the beginning. The guide had problems putting on his tank, and while he was taking care of that, he almost lost his entire group. What? Probably to make up for the lost time, he led them on a radically fast descent. And as a result, instead of going down to the planned 25 meters, the divers plunged straight down to over 40. The only person aware of this was Elena, an instructor who had an underwater computer, the only one in the whole group. Wait, they didn't have computers either? The next predicament came so. when Michel, the Dutch diver, began to panic. Oh no. He Michelle. thought that the inflator valve on his BCD wasn't working and that he was sinking. Panic sharply increased his air consumption and within minutes he was on his way up to the surface with his buddy Dima, sharing air from Dima's tank. What in the middle of such on? underwater the mayhem, the divers probably neglected to pay attention to the current, which that day was not only especially strong, but going northbound against the wind. As a result, when the five divers surfaced, there was not a vessel in sight. Meanwhile, the skipper of the motorboat was desperately looking for the divers in the original spot. Nobody has an SMB. The divers spent the whole day at sea oh, waiting oh, to be did. found. Okay. Floating on their backs, some tried to lightly work their fins toward the shore. Then. Just before sunset, one of the Russian divers, Vladislav, decided to discard his gear and swim towards the shore with the remains of his strength. Come on, Vladislav. The others did not dare to follow. Several hours later, in the dark, Vladislav reached the shore, but the approximate location he gave to the rescue team did not help find the other divers. And none of these divers had any flashlights with them, oh. not even small ones. Man. That's a mistake right there. I break down on every dive. Malfunction during a cave dive near the Egyptian city of Nueva was the reason behind the panic and death of another Russian diver, Alexei Borisov. This incident also took place around Russian Christmas holidays in January 2007. It happened at the depth of 80 meters down into the cave, and he did not have a spare. 260 feet. There were three of us there that day. Me, 
Alexei, and another experienced cave diver, Sergei. What happened was quite typical for a cave dive. It's just a tragic convergence of circumstances. Alexei started panicking uncontrollably, which really often happens to people inside a cave. Another Russian diver, Alexander Nikitan, died in January 2007 after diving alone to a depth of over 100 meters. This solo diver, as such divers are called, lost his weights while going back up and was literally thrown out oh, onto the surface. No. He died from severe decompression sickness. In total, Missed seven Russian stuff. divers perished in Egypt just in the first two months of 2007. Each of these tragic incidents, with the possible exception of the death of the solo diver, shows evidence of non-compliance with standard diving regulations, or at least signs of being unprepared for handling emergency circumstances. The educational systems are partly to blame for this because they could not get across to the people the important point that rules must be followed. For example, yeah. when the Russian divers disappeared at Elphinstone, that was really very strange. They were completing Wait, so their advanced they all open died? water diver paddy course. The diving circumstances were yeah. quite difficult. Wait, I'm not, I'm not following. Okay, so this is the part that I'm not following. So there were five of them, the first five. One guy w was like YOLO. He was an Olympic swimmer. He should get back. Right, right, right. He was probably, yeah, uh, Michael Phelps' competitor uh, on that Olympics. He was like, you know what? I'm just going to start swimming that way, follow the sun until I hit Earth. And he just went and, and did it. I was blown away. I apologize to Boris or whatever his name was. I forgot. But he made it to, to, to well, Earth. Well, Boris is a standard. You can. Yeah. Assume Probably. it's Boris I'm something. Almost positive. Um, Boris it, Cheklikov or something like that. And then what happened to the other four? Well, he they got just back died? There. Well, he got back there. He's like, oh, they're over they're there. They're like, where is he? Where's the rest of them? Well, let me try to describe it. And it, it's a nowhere. They were to like, water it, I, all That's over what I think. I don't, I don't know. So the keep. other four just died. Well, let's hear. Maybe Everyone we'll who's been to Elphinstone knows that there is a strong current there. Okay. There you go. Especially in the winter. Yes. Uh, Open water. Yeah. No bottom to speak of, cool. meaning the slope is very steep. I think the problem here was that the course was being conducted in such difficult conditions. Yeah, that's a problem. The deaths of Russian divers in 2007 didn't stop at the January and February count. In November, four tourists from Barnaul went diving at that same Elphinstone Reef spot. Oh Only God. one made it back to the surface. What? Dude! As soon as he came up to the surface, we asked him where his buddy was. He told us his story, which initially was summed up in two sentences. He we were going in two pairs. Oh. The guys went down, and I didn't see them anymore. From further details wow. given by Vladislav Popov, it became clear that he, being the least experienced, was left behind at 40 meters. The others went deeper to 90 meters. Standard practice regulations of any diving they certifying organization bad. prohibit diving deeper than 30 meters on a supply of only one tank of regular air. Any rule abiding diver 40. would be horrified to hear this story. It's well known that after 30 meters, there is a high chance of developing nitrogen narcosis. That's true. Divers can fall into a state of either euphoria mm -hmm. or panic and behave and react inadequately. Besides, coming true. back up from 90 meters requires lengthy decompression stops. And Absolutely. one tank of one air tank? is not simply insufficient. Single tank to 90 but will meters? They didn't mean undoubtedly to. lead to a catastrophe. But no, In hold Russia. on. The guy said the guy said that they told him his body's like you hold here at 40 meters, at 130 feet. You hold here. We're gonna go down to 90. Uh, what? With a single tank. What is going on? Well, it just gets. It's just people are just not following rules. They're not going to their trained depths. They're not using the right gas. You're gonna die. No, you do these things, you're Russian gonna die. Roulette. Yeah. This thing. Sure. The news of their compatriots' deaths are often perceived as a kind of an evil destiny. Some even talk of the Elphinstone Reef curse. Dude, we gotta go there. Elphinstone. Yeah, on the rebreathers, pr with proper gas, with helium, sure. no problem. It'd be uh, actually a really cool dive. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, this is, this is a basic video Disturbing. on don't dive beyond your training. Isn't it? Isn't that sum up this entire video? That's right. Just don't die beyond your training. And 
be an Olympic swimmer if you can. Apparently. Yeah. That's great. Um, you know, I, I am kind of disturbed by the fact that these divers are just going into these dives what seems to be knowingly and just like YOLO. Like, ah, let's just do it. 90 meters, 90 meters, one tank, whatever. The guy on the boat searched for like 30 minutes, like, eh, F it. And he just, he just let, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And this looks pretty old. I'm, I'm hoping there's a lot less of this going on now. Yeah. Unfortunately, we, due to the deaths, but. Yeah. Uh, these vets, though, in, in Egypt are definitely occurring every once in a while. And we actually recorded a video where, unfortunately, some of those deaths are actually visible. So, you know, if you're susceptible to, you know, um, being shocked by, with images like that, please don't watch it. But if you haven't seen it, I'm going to leave it right here where they find some bodies deep into the Blue Hole and other reefs in Egypt. Thank you all for watching. Interesting video. Yeah. Bye, everybody.